Hi guys. It is a absolutely gorgeous and I mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It's spectacularly gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I forgot spectacular. <laughs> redo it, redo it, redo it. <laughs> anyway, guys, we will at any minute uh, get to who this fine looking couple here is. Uh, but it is a gorgeous, it is straight up noon on Friday, July 19th, 19th 2024. And it is my great pleasure. Well, it's always my pleasure, I guess the third time, uh, to bring uh, Jeremy Jimenez back uh, to talk to us. But obviously, we're a lot more interested. Who is this young woman uh, <laughs> sitting next to Jeremy? This is Andrea, the, uh, the, new, the newest Doomer chick in the, in the crowd. So... Uh, we're going to get a little more personal uh, in, in today's Chronicle of the Collapse. So, my buddy Jeremy, not quite as bad as me pining for his Doomer chick forever. Uh, and so, we, we've been comparing rates of self-pity and misery for, what, five years? About that. And this guy has proven to me that it can happen. So, uh, I, 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 anyway, we're going to let Andrea, uh, I, I, I want, Andrea, I want you to talk to other Doomer chicks, but I mainly want you to aim this to the, these Doomer dudes who think they have no chance it ain't gonna happen that they're ever going to get a doomer chick forever in their lives i want you to raise the uh <laughs> the <laughs> opium of that so uh, andrea tell us how you met this guy and what is your advice uh, a little bit to Doomer chicks looking for Doomer dudes, but mostly what is your advice to Doomer dudes looking for Doomer chicks? Take it away. Yes. So, um, first of all, the way that I met Jeremy, I only became a collapse wear uh, in early 2022. And then it was late 2023. I was talking to a neighbor and we had just met to talk serious, you know, whatever topics. And somehow I started talking about, I remember making her look at the limits to growth. And I don't know whether she initiated the subject about like things are bad or joking about preparing for the end times, but it quickly transitioned to that. And I like read it right away. I get very excited and I start telling her about all this stuff. And then she goes, you've got to meet my friend, Jeremy. And I said, I'm not interested. <laughs> and, then, and I remember. I yeah, that's how I usually goes. That's usually the end of the story. So, <laughs> Well, and because I was like, at this point, I think more and more so you're meeting, you're, you're encountering people in the wild who are, who know that there are problems, but they think they've got the solutions. And even at the time I was working for like a climate startup. And so you get people who are like, here's how we're going to save the world. And I figured he would be another one of those people. So I was like, I don't need another to headline this. reader. And so, yeah. And I said, I think he's just a guy who's read a bunch of scary headlines. Um, and then a month later or so, once again, I ended up talking about doom and she was like, you need to meet him. So I caved and I agreed to go to dinner with him. And one of the first few words, a group dinner, like group a, dinner. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I should rewind because Jeremy has known this friend, my neighbor, who is for like, what, six years? Okay, yeah. And so he'd been talking to her for a long time with no return on that investment, right? Like it had, he had to invest and be talking about doom to her for years before she then met someone else that she could correctly identify yeah, yeah, like, yeah. okay, here's a good match. Um, and it had to be like the right type of doom that we were both talking. Um, and so I remember the first time I met him, um, I, I came now, away just, just let me break in. Yes. So Jeremy, it, now, and I want to reference, I have interviewed Jeremy twice. So you can just, uh, I'll try to remember to put the links to those two interviews. Although you can just do a search on my interviews with Jeremy. But Jeremy, just real quickly, tell people, so you're a professor of whatever, just real quickly. Uh. I'm a professor of education um, at State University of New York at Cortland. 
I teach primarily future teacher candidates about race, class, gender issues, environmental issues, international issues. Um, I was hired more for the race, class, gender, and I teach those, but I created environmental and international education courses that, that they can take as electives. Okay. So this was the the impressive uh, CVS you were. I wasn't. That wasn't what it was. <laughs> that one. What, what, well, it was obviously his good looks and charm. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so so what happened? You agreed to you agreed go to one to, of his lectures. No, I went to dinner first. Oh, that's right. Uh, at that him. group dinner. That's right. And yeah. that like. Yeah, it was two couples, and it was funny because the two of us were, like, super excited to be speaking to each other and to talk the same language, and, like, it was crazy to meet someone who I could rattle off these names, and he would immediately recognize them. I didn't have to explain anything because he'd read all the books and stuff, and so we were excited to meet each other, and then it was kind of a double date, so the friend that introduced us brought her partner, and he's watching the whole time, and at the end of us ranting, he just goes... So how much of this stuff do you guys believe? And we're like, <laughs> all of it? <laughs> like, we didn't just spend an hour talking about things that we don't believe is real. Um, and it is all mostly mainstream stuff. And then um, I continued talking to him via emails, and we were continuing to exchange thoughts and stuff. And then I would say two things made me be like, okay, this is a guy that I'm actually interested in. All right, Besides listen up, basic. listen up, guys. Right. Uh, Take well, notes. One was what the are the two things? <laughs> one was the interview on Sandy's channel where the guy in the comments was being a troll and you didn't get bothered at all. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many, like it's not enough for him to just be a doomer. You, I want the personality that appeals to me as well. And I would not have wanted a guy who would get annoyed with the guy in the comments and whatever. And you were just like keeping it so cool. And I was like, oh, you have a good heart. And then also, then uh, he gave his overshoot talk, um, which was on the other, I don't know what the channel is called. Oh, so, well, yeah. So um, conveniently, I was invited to give this uh, speaker series talk with uh, Bill Reese and Max Wilbur, and I was the second the middle guy, the the, the least important B-lister of, of the trio. <laughs> and uh, but it was a talk. Well, that's a good. That's a good. I'm a good company. Uh, yes, I was yeah, elevated good by good bookends. I mean, you got the king of the heap. And Max <laughs> yeah, is yeah. a great guy too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was I was given the middle talk on ecological overshoot, and it was just like an online YouTube movie, which maybe uh, Sam you could link it. It's also available yeah. that talk. Um, and I said, oh, I, I can, uh, you should come check my talk. And she offered to actually, because she's she runs with things immediately. She immediately organized a a, 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 a viewing party with her neighborhood. But so you went to see it live. Well, no, no, no. It was, it was only online for everyone. But she organized a viewing party to watch uh, it live. Oh, I thought you meant you went and to the studio where he did that. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Um, so and, that was the what? Well, and the, so the, as part of that, he stayed on to do question and answer, and then. We all, everyone that I was doing, if wanted to like continue the conversation. So even after he cut off the official Q and A and the interview and the talk, he got back online and talked to us for another hour on Zoom. Um, and I was like, oh, that's so generous. Like you could have just been like, no, I don't feel like you know I did enough. I just spent two hours on Zoom doing my spiel, and like now I'm going to go on to the rest of my life or whatever. But you stayed online because people wanted to talk about these subjects. So I thought that was very generous. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't just it was you know step one is the ex talking doom like th this happened because both of us weren't afraid to just talk about this stuff to people all the time and then eventually and, and it was, so this enough, was first date uh, first date doom uh that, that's pretty ballsy and then and bring then it the, right up on the first day and then the and then the thing that closed it was just a match of personalities and what i was looking like for and what helped that was the fact that we weren't just like you already had content online and stuff and i feel like it could have happened the same way like i did find your the, the resilience post that you had or whatever and so i was doing background research afterwards so you were vetting this her. guy yeah, yeah, you yeah. did a doomer vetting they're, they're right. she found stuff that i even forgot i had put up there <laughs> and it was just like i wanted to be sure that his values are the same because there's different types of orientations that people have to this whole thing um, and then also, you want to say what you, the usual advice that you get on doom pilling first dates? Oh, uh, if actually, if I could quote my friend Sam Mitchell, <laughs> Samantha Mitchell, uh, she said because I was telling her, you know, I was, oh, I was having children. I, I talk, I bring this stuff up, and then like, you know, the woman on the date someone here is like, and he goes, Jeremy, nothing dries the vag like talking about the end of the world. <laughs> and so then for a while, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna maybe just kind of. Put a put a kibosh on that when I go when I go out on dates and talk to them and, and if it emerges more naturally I might bring it up and of course that's hard to do when you're a doomer right when you see everything around you and you want to comment on it but um 
but yeah, it was so refreshing with Andrea to like, no, actually that advice, which probably is good advice for normies. Uh, those of us who have actually, you know, taken the, take the red pill. Or the blue pill. I was scared which was pillars. The black the, pill. The, the, yeah, the, 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 the soft pill. white under belly, when I use the word red pill, I got five hundred comments. Dude, you're not red pilled, you're black pilled. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. So, so we, we gotta keep it straight. We're black pilled. So yeah, and then finally I could actually uh, speak we can both speak honestly and openly. Yeah, I I don't even know what I would talk to with anybody else if I wasn't sending you these kinds of articles all the time. <laughs> yeah, she does. A, I am her good doom pill dump. It is a, yeah. she just... So if you had had this first date and he had pulled out his new uh, smartphone and started showing you all the cool features on his new smartphone. <laughs> and not a much. Would, would, that, not would there have been a second date? No, I've never even, I generally did not date whatsoever because I was so, I was living in New York City before this and I moved to this area because of becoming collapse aware and being like, oh, I got to get out of there. But um, I, having heard the horror stories of all my friends every weekend, we would hang out. I had a group of girlfriends and like in, they in New York just, City, New York City. Yeah. And they just the dating scene sounded so awful and just going nowhere and just miserable or whatever. So then I was just like, I don't even want to be part of that. So I didn't even bother to look for anyone. So I wasn't I actually I contributed to a book by Bella DePaulo called Single at Heart. And I was like I was on <laughs> instead of being like on a doomer binge, I was like on a I'm never going to be in a couple because it seems like there's no way to do that and actually be happy. Like I had so few examples. Um, so I, I was previously a small time celebrity in that world. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you blew that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that cover has been blown. So how long has this little romance been? Six months. We met six, in November. Oh, six months. November. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was the thing when we went traveling together. People would also be like, "So, how long is this?" And we're like, "Not long." <laughs> so, cool. Okay. Oh yeah. So we, I, I, I brought. So she's uh, as you may know from other things you might have seen me on. I do travel a lot, and um, maybe still in the go to go to every country in the world. I'm pretty close. I'm nearing 180. Um, whether or not I will is up in the air. But uh, I wanted her to come. I want to travel a little bit with her. Because she's being very inclined to like the the troubles of travel, and and, and we often see right the two of our airports, Dubai and and Kenya, floods. Flooded. We narrowly missed flights getting canceled because of massive flooding. So that's like, also that story that came out while we were abroad about like the airplane that like had turbulence and like people got concussions or whatever. Yeah. So it's so, kind of like. <laughs> so she is. So I, I was glad we got to go to to two places, Turkmenistan and Seychelles, before she has written off international travel. So, uh, but I'm I'm probably winding up myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was also something that you talked to me about when it comes to like dating and finding someone as well that it hadn't occurred to me is that like you want to one of the benefits of finding someone who is also already aware of the doom and has kind of like thought of how, how they feel about it is like you know what kind of person they are once they become aware so like he knows that I'm the kind of doomer who's like I'm done traveling or whatever but if you meet someone they might you right, know, yeah. turn into a shell of a right it's, yeah, it's why everyone should should date a doomer because eventually all normies or most normies will become doomers, right? When conditions get so bad and you don't know what their personality is going to change like when they go from normie to doomer and how they're going to transition that. So it's better to kind of like know how their transition is to a doomer while they are a doomer because you might be getting a completely different person, right? Someone who might seem happy and confident and sharing and generous pre-doomer might in the after times just be, you know, completely selfish and anxiety prone and, and whatever, right? You don't know. So it's it's always better. Well, and there and then there's that evolution between Normie and Doomer, the apocalyptic phase right. that oh. that I certainly you went better. through. <laughs> so you're post apocalyptic. Yeah. Uh, so if he had mentioned that's uh, actually more annoying to me. Yeah, now he yeah. does drive. Don't you drive an electric? Car? Uh, I drive a hybrid, right? A hybrid. Which, which means I'd be allowed to drive it. In, in, so yeah, he, he has one foot in both worlds. Uh, he has one foot in, in the frying pan and one foot in the fire. Instead of both feet in either one, you got one foot in the frying pan and one in the well, fire. So, so you gave him a pass on the I on the hybrid well because car. Because he doesn't think it's going to save the world. Now there are things that we disagree on in terms of like how is the next twenty years, yeah. right? So he thinks he's going to get in maybe two more sabbaticals. Yeah, I I, I I I think I might be lucky to get in two more sabbaticals. I don't know if I will, you, but uh, she's pretty sure I won't. So. Do you mind telling about how old you are? Or is that... I am 33. 33. And so he's significantly older. There you go. You got uh, 
33. Uh, but, well, yeah, but uh, the age gap matters less than the end times because none of us know if we'll yeah. be here in 10 years. Well, and what's funny is, like, I'm so... He's, like, determined to be bottle, to make it through the bottleneck. And I'm kind of like... I mean, like, I'm, on the one hand, I know myself and I'm not someone who's going to give up, right? So, like, I'll, I might sound like I'm ready to accept defeat on any kind of thing and then be like, no, I'll keep trying. So, like, um, I wouldn't cut things off prematurely. But... Um, I'm also someone who's like, eh, you know, if, if, if the factors take me out at 50, I'm okay with that. And so I think that that's something well, that, that So, so you, you, so I heard 17 years yeah. is your, uh, I mean, you don't know. Yeah, we it's, do things, not know. We, we do not know. So, uh, summing up your, your message to Doomer dudes trying to find uh, their Doomer chick forever. What is your main piece of advice? And then we'll move on. So it would be just continue speaking up about what you believe because otherwise no one is ever going to know to match you with someone else who also believes that. And, other, and then you're just going to keep finding normies um, and then have content somewhere, writing or videos or whatever, where people could you know, find out, you know, where the, any girl who's become slightly interested can go and look and find more and then, you know, be sure of whether or not she's into it. And, 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 and don't have a shadow character in the background that uh, can, can completely uh, sabotage uh, any interest that a doomer chick might have had in you. I, I will mean, just I will just add that, and so, some people know exactly what I mean, and I'm not going to explain it to anyone who doesn't know what that means. But anyway, okay, enough of the doomer falling in love. Uh, so anyway, I don't think we've talked about <coughs> this yet. So when did you become? You're 33 now. It's the middle of 2024. Mm -hmm. So when did you fall down this rabbit hole? 2022. So you're a newbie. I'm a newbie, but I, I go hard and I just like, I read a lot of things and listened to a lot of podcasts in over maybe the course of a month. Oh, really? really? I mean, you took the deep yeah. Seneca cliff dive. Yes, of like nonstop content. And then I would say in late 2022, I was still like, a, well, degrowth is the thing that we have to do. And then 2023, talking to people more about it is when I started to lose hope and started to think things through and be like, oh, these even even once you acknowledge that growth is the problem and we need to do like degrowth, then like no one's ever going to accept that. And so then I was like, oh, no, everything's actually just fucked. So you're, to, to well. you had a very brief flirtation with the apocalyptimist uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you didn't stay in that camp very long. No, yeah. One of my early crushes was Tim Perique. Uh, and so he's a deep growth guy from France. And then I was always longing, pining for him, uh, which was never going to happen. And then I found my own and he's better. <laughs> oh yeah. She, she's probably, yeah. Uh, goes harder criticizing no one as much as the eco-modernists and, uh, uh, and those, yeah. So, uh, it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm clearly, you, well, you are not a breeder. Nope. Okay, so uh, d just briefly touch on that. You're 33. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still, uh, you could still make the single biggest mistake you will you would ever make in your life but was it a how conscious of a decision and how recent did you do forever give up bringing a child onto this planet um so when i was 30 and because of my personality type i actually i made a two column list in my journal where i felt like i need this needs to be a deliberate decision it can't just be like yeah. i go on and on being like i don't know because then you fall into the wrong thing. And so I actually assessed factors to and to not do the parenthood thing. And um, I actually had quite a few reasons that I would want to do it. And I did used to work as a summer camp counselor with kids and like, I like kids. Um, but then there were also reasons not to. And one of the reasons not to is, and this was before, this was like a few weeks before I became doom -pilled. I had written a bullet being like, famines like aren't we going to live in at that time i used the term third world conditions in the future and i was like it's weird because i hadn't done any doom you know dive you hadn't yet, done your deep dive yet. but if you just even at that point which was in early 2022 maybe like january the news was already out there it was so clear to me in the headlines like i was just someone who immediately saw them was like yep that seems like the way it's going and didn't resist it and so that was already a consideration of and i just think that um 
the the kindest thing that I can do for my eggs is to let them just find their way out and not become people. <laughs> so. All right. I think that is the, the kindest thing you can do to your eggs. Uh, also. Uh, so you were living in New York City and, and you took this deep dive and you, and, and you had this brief uh, period, very brief, being an apocalyptic, but I think it was during that brief period that you moved to the uh, to the, the the local eco village in Ithaca, New York. So I don't want to get you in any trouble with your neighbors, but do you want do you have anything to say about people oh, no, shopping eco that. villages? <laughs> It's, um, I, I could say the positive that I got out of it. First of all, I'm happy with my decision to move from the city to the countryside. Um, and then living there, what's funny, one of the reasons that I chose to live there was, it was a decision that I made within like maybe two weeks of learning everything and, and learning about the limits to growth and stuff. And Richard Heinberg specifically says one of the first things you should do, and this was back in like 2006 with peak oil stuff, is like move to an eco village. And that was like his prescription. And I just like, before I had much time to think through things on my own, like took that advice and was like, yeah, that seems like a good thing to do. So describe where you live in the eco village. How many stories is your condo? Uh, we're on the third floor of a four-story building that has elevators. Very sustainable. Uh, uh, an eco, uh, you're on the third floor of a four-story eco condo. Mm -hmm. With flushing toilets. I'm uh, already uh, anticipating the day that we're going to have to walk up and down those stairs if it still stands once so, that's uh, an option. A, a four-story uh, eco condo. You, you, you know... So are you the only person in the eco village who, who, who fully understands there's no such thing as a four story eco condo? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so you do have an absurdist, ironic sense of humor. You do appreciate how absurd th th these apocalyptic ain't going to happen, uh, that they actually with a straight face, someone living in a four story condo will call themselves what do they call themselves yeah. in the eco village um i think there's well and what the other benefit is like getting an inside look at how people who are fans of like bill mckibben and yeah. stuff think um and so there there's a little bit of techno optimism is going to save us and then there's a little bit of also we need to like globally cut down on consumerism and it's just like they haven't connected the dots of being like is this all actually going to happen and work together and and is it going to be enough um and i'm sensing this is really interesting like as an insider there's a lot of stress there's a lot of tension i think they the things that they're hoping for are not happening and every day they turn on the news and the emissions continue to go up and i see that kind of like boiling up as like anger and and just kind of like yeah yeah just that fundamental shift of not recognizing that modernity is like the cancer on the community uh, of life right yeah. that, that 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 that's the key piece you have to and they've, they've said things like um we we can have a middle class life and live sustainably and like that's 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 actually the mission of the place just to show people how a middle class life can be sustainable and it's like what and there's, yeah, there's no like, such thing as a sustainable of, middle class life there's it, a lot it, of like it's... unexamined statements made uh to 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 put it mildly, uh, so do you think you're going to continue hanging out in the eco village, or is your head going to explode soon? Yeah. Um, well, what I like is that I can get away from it. I need to learn to like not participate in the conversations as much. That's like the key to staying sane. Um, and I think right now it's the thing is it is next to farmland. It is in a nice location. Um, you've got like good visibility from it and that guy like it has those kinds of arguments the location itself has arguments for it and a lot of the people are older and so they won't be there <laughs> in the future um, and then you also have to think like I think you know that we will continue to have apocalyptic next decade and the decade after that but I think that that will maybe fade a little bit but anyway I think the overall thing is keeping options open because... and they, uh, yeah so one of the one of our points of disagreement is the viability of a doomstead and uh, so, yeah, so we often have back and forth about like what's actually possible, what's actually worth investing in, the trade off of like getting land now and starting work on it versus like, oh, just hang on, save money with modernity and, and when ready, well, make the leap. She just said they had the view from the third story balcony the third of, uh, story. Uh, of the, the approaching. The uh, yeah, they're up on the hill. 
uh, the, the, the approaching mobs from uh, from Manhattan, your old friends from Manhattan, yeah, come coming up. You, you, you can sit on your third floor, floor balcony of your eco condo uh, with your AK-47 and start mowing down your former girlfriends from yeah. Manhattan. <laughs> They can't run fast in their fields, Yeah, so you, you might not have that view from a doomsday. Yeah. There might be too many trees. Um, uh, and yeah, like we don't have a stream the way that you do in that. So those are like things that I'm thinking about. Um, but until then, I think there's a lot of like, I'm very much in favor of playing things by ear. And why cut off an option when you have multiple like, he has a place, I have a place. There was a moment when there's been times where he's had electricity during a, a disaster and I haven't, or I have and he yeah. hasn't. So actually, and that's one of the things of resilience is having like diversity and just like a lot of things in your basket to choose from and so. So, so uh, but, you're, you, but you are not, so, so you guys still aren't 100% sure on the same page uh, about doomsday. Well, about when and the where we have an idea. We know fresh water is like one of the giving one of the most key points and a decent amount of acres, especially if it's not just us, but like my extended family and anyone else. Um, but uh, it's more about when should we make the leap to actually living there full time versus is should we just kind of get a place and kind of like manage it from a distance, visit periodically until things get worse? Yeah, until yeah. right up and engaging it right up till the day. Yeah. I and, and and of course there's also like you know yes modernity is horrible for all life on Earth, but uh, yeah it sure makes life easier, right? So like um, if we were to go full in right away, that's a hard learning curve as opposed to if you could still gradually transition and yeah, but then how fast things fall apart it's, 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 it's yeah awesome. the, the 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 whole idea of a gradual transition is is getting more shaky mm, every day more. yeah uh anywho's well so uh we got a few more minutes so uh, andrea do you want to plug your uh your sub stack oh, or yeah, whatever sure. so uh tell us about what what you were doing to spread the word of doom and gloom yeah so i have on substack i posted a, it's 24 posts and that's all it is so it's not actually a newsletter it's just four pieces of writing um and so i call it a post doom primer and um it's basically like post doom primer post, yes and it is basically i've met some people who have been kind of curious about this stuff and so i've it basically i felt like i've gone through the work of explaining certain topics to them by email. And then if I did that writing anyway, why not kind of put it all together in one place? And so it kind of explores, it's almost like an FAQ of uh, what do people, when they're starting to learn about doing, what questions do they ask? What things do I feel like they most need to get? And it's kind of just a starting point where, okay. for example, the person, Grant, that you had here, I'm gonna tell them to read it. Cause I feel like it's, if you're so open to So how do learning, people access that? What, so um, how do you if find you it? If you Google post doom primer, it'll be in the top results. Um, there's also, I mean, it's not my podcast. There's a podcast called, for example, Breaking Down Collapse, which gives you like the 101 on collapse. And I feel like that's, it's similar, but it's in written form. So it's like shareable. So it's for the people just going. So, it, it, so if you you've been, find anything. It, yeah. If you, so if you're already uh, down here and, and know that we are fought, it, 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 so, uh, yeah, just well, you still might enjoy it because you might find it. She has some, some funny zingers in there. You think yeah. it's funny? There's Good also images, links to a lot uh, of like other content. So, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. Um, short videos he likes to show it to his class <laughs> so, i mean certain content to his class so it's kind of like if you're looking for updated like what's a really good video about exponential growth it's probably on there you'll find it easily that kind of okay thing. So all right so. the post doom primer and that's on substack yes. so if you put substack post well, you can also doom. link it on the I'll video right you can probably link it on the video yeah I'll, i will do, i will do no no one ever reads video descriptions so. <laughs> They never, they never read them. I, people who spend three pages in their video description, I don't read them. <laughs> and, 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 and it's obvious over the years that people don't read my video <laughs> descriptions either. I would, I'm going to put them in a comment and I'm going to link to your videos too. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I have to uh, take off my uh, Doomer hat and put on my vacation rental super host hat because on this absolutely glorious 
weekend. I've got spectacularly. spectacularly gorgeous. I have two sets of people, and I got to get this tiny house clean. And we, I got to go off. We're actually volunteering at the Grassroots Festival. And so. you're on what crew? Uh, composting. Yeah, composting. We're, both, we're both master composters. Uh, so what are you composting? Food waste? Yeah. Food waste. We're going to save the planet. All right. <laughs> One, one, one compost bucket at a time. One compost bucket at a time. So, uh, well, enjoy composting at the uh, at the music festival. And uh, anyway, it has been great having you on, and we'll have to do this again. And guys, as I say, I've got two other interviews with, with Jeremy uh, on this channel, and Sandy also has interviewed Jeremy over at Environmental Coffee House. So you might want to tune into that since we didn't let this guy talk very much. That's right. Get out there and get your doomer chick slash dude. Wow, you still, still can. can. Yeah, thanks a lot. Rub it in, brother. Rub it in. Bye, guys.